Hey there, it's Austin Meyer, and today I'm going to talk about what is new in X-Plane 12.08. So this particular update is primarily centered on flight model, and the flight model is so important because it's what drives absolutely everything. So the first new flight model improvement for this update to X-Plane is the jet engine model. So take a look at the jet engine on the airplane right back behind me. You might look at that and think it's a 20,000 pound thrust engine, but it's actually not quite that simple. You see, there is a turbine deep in the core of that engine, and that that tiny little turbine has a limited amount of horsepower. What does that mean, limited horsepower? Well, let me show you an equation that is kind of age old in physics. Power equals force times velocity. Let's think about that equation for a moment and pause the video if you want. What this equation says is that if you double the force, you double the power requirement. But there's something interesting going on. If you double the velocity, you also double the power requirement. In other words, it takes twice the power to go twice the speed, even if your force doesn't change. Now let's invert this equation for just a moment. Look at this. Force equals power divided by velocity. What does this equation tell us? It means that if the engine in the airplane behind me has a limited amount of power, the faster the airplane goes, the less force the engine is going to be able to put out. Now, is that really the way jet engines operate? Let's find out. Here's a thrust curve of a Boeing 737. You see thrust in the vertical axis and Mach number in the horizontal axis. I've outlined 100% RPM in red. And as you see, the engine makes a certain amount of thrust when it's not moving. But as the airplane builds up speed, the thrust deteriorates. This is the proof that a jet engine has a limited amount of power. The faster it goes, the less force it has. Now, if that was the end of this discussion, we wouldn't be able to fly jet airplanes today. We'd also be flying propellers. Something else is clearly going on here that makes jets possible. And if you look at the curve, you'll see when you get above about Mach 0.5 or Mach 0.6, the thrust actually starts coming up. Why? <laughs> well, this comes down to Bernoulli. I'm sure you already know that Bernoulli says as air speeds up, it goes to a lower pressure. I mean, that's what lifts up wings, for goodness sake. But what you might not have thought about before is it also works the other way around. If you slow air down, it goes to a higher pressure. And that's exactly what jet engine inlets do. They slow the air down, bring it up to a higher pressure, and that kind of turbocharges the engine, lets it give more thrust. I call it pulling a reverse Bernoulli. Other people call it ram air effect. So, the fascinating thing about jet engines is, while they do lose thrust because they have only limited horsepower, as they build up above about half the speed of sound, ram air effect starts turbocharging these engines, and you get that thrust right back again. Now, if it was that simple, then we could keep going faster and faster and getting more thrust forever. Why, we'd be able to fly it infinity speed. So, of course, we don't get away with it that easy, do we? Turns out there's two limits on how well these jet engines can actually do when the speed starts building up. The first is a pressure limit. The engine can only withstand so much pressure. In aviation, we actually measure pressure in knots equivalent airspeed, K-E-A-S. It's basically just how much pressure is slamming against the pitot tube as the airplane moves forward. Real jet engines have a knots equivalent airspeed limit that the engine simply can't go beyond. Here it is for an F-104 Starfighter, and here it is in Plane Maker, where you can enter it in Plane Maker to fly an X-Plane as well. So there's your limit on pressure, but that's not the only limit. If you keep pushing through that pressure limit, you're going to bump into another limit. Temperature. As the Mach number starts to build, the compression starts happening, ideal gas law applies, and your temperature is going to come up through the roof. Metal is going to start melting. They had to build the SR-71 out of titanium to let that thing go Mach 3, and the Concorde was limited by its nose temperature when it would cruise just above Mach 2. So there's metallurgy limits that say that an engine can only withstand up to a certain temperature. That is the next limit. And here it is as you enter it in Plane Maker. So finally, to summarize the new jet engine model, we've got a certain amount of horsepower that gives a certain amount of thrust at static or standing still. As the aircraft builds up speed, the thrust deteriorates because the jet engine is a lot closer to constant power than we thought. 
above about half the speed of sound, Bernoulli starts pulling a reverse move on us and increasing the pressure. Ram air effect increases the thrust. At some point, we can hit our maximum knots equivalent airspeed pressure limit, at which point thrust cannot continue to increase. And if we keep pushing through that, we're going to hit a temperature limit where the thrust falls off as Mach number builds. All of these things happen with jet engines, and they're all simulated now in X-Plane 1208. All right, another cool new feature for 1208 is one that somebody asked for, and I almost did not code for them because it just seemed unnecessary. But the more I started thinking about this feature, the more fascinating it became until I absolutely had to code it. All right, so this whole thing starts with a question. Where is the oil cooler in this airplane? Can you find one? I've looked. I can't. You look in a Cessna 172 or something, the oil cooler is this big old radiator in the cowl of the engine. You're not putting a big old radiator in the airstream of this thing, not when it's pushing Mach 1. So how on earth does he cool his oil? I used to think that, oh, jet engines, they must just run really hot. No, no, no. You're not allowed to just run the oil temperature up in a jet engine or you're going to lose your jet engine. This guy's got to follow the laws of physics, just like a Cessna 172. <laughs> the difference is he finds some better laws to follow. So here's how he does it. As this guy's operating, he's got really hot oil temperature in the engine and he has thousands and thousands of pounds of ice cold fuel in the wings. Fuel that's so cold that it turns into a jelly in some cases and can barely be pumped. Fuel is so cold it won't atomize properly in the combustion chamber. So his fuel is too cold and his oil is too hot. You see where I'm going with this? There's a heat exchanger up there in the engine. The oil is running through these pipes, super hot coming out of the engine, and the ice cold fuel is flowing across those pipes, and that exchanges the heat. The oil cools down to a temperature that'll let the engine run for thousands of hours. The fuel is heated up to the point that it's not a jelly, it's a liquid, and it'll atomize very nicely for burning. Now, here's something incredible about this airplane. These guys all have solid state fuel pumps. The circulation of fuel from the engine is what drives more fuel into the engine. It's a solid state system, no moving parts. But when you design a system like that that's solid state, it's got to be overbuilt since it can't be regulated. In other words, there's always more fuel going up to these engines than they need to burn. So some of the fuel when it goes to the engine is turned into thrust, some after being heated up by the oil, is recirculated right back to the tanks. In other words, in flight, there is hot fuel in these tanks that's been heated up by taking heat away from the oil. Then, in the colder upper atmosphere, that heat radiates away. In other words, this airplane does have an oil cooler. <laughs> it's the wings. How cool is that? All right, you've got to see this in X-Plane. Pop open any jet airplane, go to the little graphics equalizer in the upper right hand corner, select data output, type fuel into the search bar, and check the leftmost box for fuel temperatures. You'll see them on display. Fly the airplane at different speeds and altitudes and temperatures and power settings. Watch how the fuel temperature changes. I'm tracking that energy all as it circulated throughout the airplane, and it's kind of incredible the way that fuel temperature changes in flight. Another cool new feature involves the tire model. So here's the thing, when you're in an airliner, especially a heavy one, you have to add a bit of additional thrust to break that weld between the rubber and the pavement and start kneading that tire like dough as it rolls forwards. This is called breakaway thrust, and you need a little more of it to get going. But once that weld is broken and the tire started rotating, you can back off to a lower power setting and continue to roll. Breakaway thrust is now simulated in X-Plane 1208, so we've got a good tire model right from the get-go. Now, it's not just the jet engine model that's approved. I've got a better reciprocating engine model as well. So Philip Munzel, one of the folks at Laminar Research, has access to a flying club, a whole bunch of airplanes in it, and all of these airplanes are equipped with incredible flight data recorders. These flight data recorders record all sorts of engine parameters, oil pressure, oil temperature, prop RPM, it's all recorded. So Philip and I have spent some time looking at all these graphs and refining the temperature models for reciprocating engines in X-Plane. So now, what Whatever sort of engine indications you see for a prop in X-Plane is pretty close to what you're going to see in the real aircraft. 
Okay, so that's some of the new flight model stuff for 1208. <laughs> that's not all we're working on. I've also been working on professional use in the background. We have better screen warping, edge blending, we're working with scalable display, all the things necessary to make a big cylindrical or spherical projection for professional use. I've got better flight data recorder integration where you can read flight data recorder files from Garmin's to replay actual flights in X-Plane. I've also got an engineer working full-time on networking to design next generation external visuals and multiplayer, and I got Ben Supnick and some of the graphics guys on next-gen graphics and scenery. All of this is happening at the same time as we start to build a platform to move forwards.